The globe is warming, and soon we might be doomed. According to Earth.org, we might have one of the most catastrophic climactic change situations by the end of the century. Most places on Earth might become too hot to live in by the end of the century. For instance, in 2019, not a hundred, a hundred thousand, a million, a billion, but 302.4 billion work hours were lost due to excessive heat. Sadly enough, with just 2 degrees Celsius of warming, 99% of coral reefs will be lost. These are just a few things that are happening. We have not touched on the wildfires, trillions of tons of ice lost per year, or even the new record highs of carbon dioxide and temperature ever recorded. But we might not be as doomed. All these changes are reversible. How? For one, simply changing the type of energy we're using to renewable ones, such as solar energy, is a gift the world gives us for free. And that's all about what we'll be talking about in this video. Stay tuned and don't touch that dial. Before we start, hit the subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell. Also, don't forget to share the video so that we can help save the world together. That said, let's get rolling. Solar energy is one of the most reliable, clean, consistent, free, and renewable energy sources. Solar power is not new to humans since they've been using it for as early as the 3rd century BC. Almost 1600 years later, in 1816, they invented the first solar cell, thanks to Robert Stirling, a minister in Scotland. Since then, the technology has been used and made more efficient. Let's now focus on how we can harness this renewable energy and where we can use it. There are many ways to get solar energy directly into homes, businesses, schools, hospitals, or any other premises you wish. Photovoltaic cells and panels, concentrated solar energy, and solar architecture are all ways to use solar energy. There are different ways to gather energy from the sun and turn it into something useful. These are categorized into either active solar energy or passive solar energy. Let's take a closer look at these, starting with passive solar energy. What is passive solar heating? With passive solar heating, a building is made in a way that it can use the sun to heat the inside. In the northern hemisphere, this means that the building should have a lot of glass on the south side so that the sun can shine in and less glass on the north side so that the walls can keep the heat inside. There may also be long overhangs that let light in during the winter but shade the windows when the sun is higher in the sky during the summer. Landscaping can be a part of it. For example, on the south side of the building, you could put deciduous trees that lose their leaves in the winter and let light through but block light in the summer. This method is called passive because neither electricity nor mechanical technology is used. Still, high-tech solutions may be used such as windows with double or triple panes or walls or floors with thermal mass that help keep the heat in. A fully passive solar home has to be built from scratch, but any homeowner can still do simple things to get the most heat from the sun in the winter and less in the summer. For example, just by moving your blinds, you can save a surprising amount of energy. If it's a sunny winter day and you have a lot of south-facing windows, you can get as much heat from leaving your blinds open as you would from running a space heater. On the other hand, keeping your blinds closed in the summer can cut down on how much air conditioning you need. Using the idea of passive solar heating, you can make heaters that don't use any technology except for a small fan. On YouTube, many people show off their simple DIY projects, like aluminum cans inside a frame made of wood and plexiglass. The sun passively heats the air inside these simple heaters and a small fan moves the warm air in the building. These can be useful and work the same way as the more advanced commercial solar thermal collectors. If you're handy and want to do a do-it-yourself project, you can do that with the help of many online tutorials and make your own solar heater. Let's now turn to our second method of how you can use solar energy, using active solar heating systems. Active solar heating creates heat by mechanical or electrical equipment. Several varieties of solar heaters are available, some of which are unique, for instance, solar thermal collectors, which immediately catch the sun's energy as heat and transfer it to your home's hot water tank. 
Solar thermal collectors are far simpler than solar photovoltaic panels, which employ semiconductors to convert sunlight into energy. They function by absorbing the sun's rays using a dark-colored collector. The heated fluid within the collector flows around a loop to a heat exchanger, discharging the heat into a hot water tank. A system like this may provide all of a home's hot water requirements, or the hot water can be utilized for radiant space heating. Utility-scale power facilities, such as the Ivanpah Solar Plant in the Mojave Desert, employ mirror fields to reflect sunlight at a central collector, which uses the vast quantity of heat energy gathered to drive steam turbines. Ivanpah has a nameplate capacity of around 400 megawatts. This design is feasible in a desert where space is not an issue, but a homeowner requires something more compact. A flat plate collector is exactly what it sounds like. It's essentially a collection of fluid-filled tubes housed within a black collector with a glass lid. The glass cover lets sunlight heat the pipes within the collector while trapping heat inside. Depending on your location and the quantity of heat energy required, these collectors may be linked together to produce a final temperature much over the boiling point of water. The advantage of these collectors is their modest profile. Each one takes up about the same area as a photovoltaic panel. In other words, they are reliable and small at the same time. The fact that solar energy is a renewable resource is a significant benefit. The Earth's atmosphere gets enough sunlight in one hour to power the electrical demands of every individual on the planet for a year, making solar energy a good alternative. With time running out, do you think solar energy is a good option as a source of green energy? Let us know your opinion in the comments section. That marks the end of our video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and turn on the post notification bell to get notifications when we upload a new video. Until the next one, stay tuned.